Hi, my name is Derek and you're watching the Bayside Games Dev Vlog. Today, the title of today's dev vlog is how to create a particle system. So this is going to take a whole lot more than one video to do. Um, so this should probably be titled Introducing Particle System Creation. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to create the skeleton of a particle system. Uh, particle systems, as you can see in the examples that I'll be playing for the next few seconds, can really add a lot to a game. Um, some games, such as um, a new one that's recently been released called um, Storm in a Teacup, make extremely good use of particle effects to indicate things to the player. And in the case of games like this, they indicate what the player can do. Um, and also, when the player moves, um, having particle effects near the player really makes him pop out of the screen. And um, particle effects are very useful for a variety of different purposes. Um, they can indicate motion. They can be used to add volume to the to whatever you're drawing. So they're used often in film and cinema too, just to give a bit of depth to the scene. Um, and they can be used for the same purpose in games. So they're great, um, but they're quite tricky to do in a way that makes them run really well. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today, is how to make an efficient particle system, which is not easy. So we're going to create a few skeleton classes um, to make the manager and once we've got our particle manager we can start adding particles to it and seeing how they look let's get going so robots can't jump the game that we're making for Bayside games today has got no particle system at the moment, so we're gonna have to make one from scratch um, we keep all of the source code for robots can't jump in a directory called source so if we go and look in there you'll see that these are the same directories as all of the other directories in the solution that you've seen before so what we want to do is actually classify the particles as an FX system. So we're actually going to create a new folder called just FX, very, very abbreviated. And in here is going to go things like sound effects and particle effects, because eventually the plan is to package these particle effects up into larger, more high level effects, because um, you really want to launch effects, not particularly particle effects. So for instance, one example of a packaged effect would be um, when you launch a missile, it plays a sound and you see particles and maybe the foam vibrates. So all of those will be packaged into one effect. So that's why we have this folder structure. And underneath here, we're going to just create particles and we'll add sound and vibration. Or maybe we'll call this one haptic, which includes vibration and all sorts of things like that. So in the particles, this is particles directory. This is where we're going to be adding our stuff. Um, now that we have these folders, we can start creating a few files. So we're just going to create some text documents. Um, first of all, we'll need a particle manager. It's not a text file, it's a CPP file. And it's going to be moaning about changing these extensions a lot. And we'll need a header file for it. We're pretty much going to have um, CPP header, CPP header for most of the stuff. So the particle manager is the overall manager for all particles. It's eventually will be packaged into the effects manager. Next up, we're going to need a particle container. And very simply, what this does is it actually contains a list of particles for us. And you'll see the, the use of this class shortly. But we'll need a container. And that one needs a header file too. Last but not least, we're actually going to need a particle class. So this is the sort of the, the ground level of our particle system. That we're just decomposing it into a bunch of different levels. So the highest level is the manager, and then what the manager contains containers, and the containers contain particles. That's how it works. So that's really simple to understand. Now all we need to do is just add it into our MKB file, because we're using AirPlay, and these will then show up in our project. So we're just going to add it in right at the end here, just before all the physics stuff. And we're just going to use the format that we already use for other stuff. FX. I actually want this to be in a subdirectory, so I'm going to have it with an extra, just an extra declarator here. That'll have it in the directory FX, and then inside there will be particle directories. So FX particles, I believe it was with an S. Yeah, with an S. Okay, now we can have the manager and all that stuff in here. Okay. So that's all we really need to do uh, in terms of getting the project part of it set up. Now let's crack open our MKB file and have a look at this in Visual Studio. Now that we have all these empty files, we need to start populating them with our classes. Okay, great, we got the project loaded up. So 
if you look you see there's a new FX folder and inside here yeah, there's particles so eventually we'll populate it with some other stuff but let's have a look at the particles and here are all of our empty files so that's great we'll have to start with the manager first and we're going to start in the header file we're just going to do the standard sort of um, hash if def guides to stop this thing being included too many times Just very similar to the name of the file. So it's quite important to have that, otherwise you might get all sorts of compiler errors. All of this stuff is going to be dumped into the RCJ namespace. And we're going to call this class particle manager. And just to start off with, we're not going to have anything too crazy. Um, it's going to be uh, not a singleton per se, but it's not going to be an object we're going to copy around a lot. Um, it's probably also going to access the game app, but for now we'll just give it a default constructor, public one, and we'll just stop it from being copied. Oops. For some reason I think we use tab to autocomplete, but that's okay. Okay, so we don't want these operations in the private block to happen ever, because the particle manager is not something we really, we really desire to be copied around. And we're definitely going to need a destructor for this class too, because it's going to be allocating all sorts of interesting resources. Okay, so that's a very simple sort of skeleton, but let's start defining the operations that the particle manager will perform for us. Um, probably the most important one is to manage containers of particles, which we'll define momentarily. So we'll have add particle container. And I'm going to show you a way to make the particle containers constructor private so that you can't actually create it without using the particle manager because that's our desired workflow. And it will actually return to your particle container we'll make it return a pointer to a particle container which we'll define momentarily because uh, this operation may or may not succeed um, if you run out of resources you really don't want to return something like a reference to something that doesn't exist so if this thing returns null we can assume that the allocation failed and just carry on without crashing the program and likewise we'll need a paired function to remove these things so we'll just have a remove particle container and you'll have to give it a valid pointer for this for this case so we can use a reference here Okay, yeah, so that's our basic thing. So that looks pretty good. Um, the other obvious thing that this will need, um, we'll call this particle container lifetime manager, because this is where you manage the lifetime of these of particles. The other thing we're going to need is a render and update method. So these participate in the game loop. And we're going to just have a very standard update method with a delta time, very popular way of doing these things. Render probably doesn't need a delta time. And last but not least, you can see that um, Visual Assist does not like this IW fixed very, uh, type. And that's because we haven't included the uh, root include file that I use called icj.h, which includes all the various AirPlay files that we need. So IW fixed is one of those things. And you can see it's quite happy with it now. All right, let's get cracking and create the particle container. So one thing before we actually go in and do that, uh, we're actually going to have to include the particle container in here in the manager so the manager can find it, the declarations that we're about to create. Okay, and we're actually going to copy a, a large part of this class. This class looks very similar to the particle container. So we can actually just specialize it and rename a few things uh, to begin with anyway. Eventually it will look very different, but this is a good quick way to just get ourselves moving. And let's just rename all of these. And a couple of these functions are obviously going to going to go. So there will be no add particle. We're not going to work that way. Uh, we may have something like that a little bit later, but not right now. So that's our particle container. As you can see, it looks very similar to the uh, particle manager, but there's one key difference, and that's going to be the object we're going to have here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have an array of particles. So we're going to have a class called particles soon. We'll just have a little list in here. And we're going to make it an array. So what size should this array be? That's, you know, that's a really good question. And the answer right now is we don't know. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a pointer, to, and a pointer instead of having an array 
So what that means is later on we can actually use um, just standard C allocation functions to allocate our particles when we know how many we want. And that raises the interesting question of when will we know how many and where will that information come from of how many particles a container can have because obviously it can't have an infinite number and in fact we want to have a fixed maximum number of particles. So we can define that here and this is where the constructor begins becoming useful. So we're going to have uh, max particles. We'll call it maximum particles to be specific. And we're going to store that off as a constant integer, integer as well. Because that this number will determine the size of this array. So it's a very important number for us to save. And last but not least, you'll notice that we created a whole new constructor, which means that we actually want to turn the default constructor into an undesirable constructor. Don't call these. The reason for this is because we don't want people to just randomly create this, because these things will be uninitialized in the default constructor and they'll contain garbage. So the last thing we need to do is define this particle class because it's obviously missing. And we know we're going to do that in particles.h. So this is, you know, the name of the header file is always the same name as the class in this project. It's a very popular standard. And once again, we'll copy this class and we're going to rename a few things because initially it will look very similar. Particles, particle, particle is um, an interesting path for this hash if def macro, but that's okay. And we'll rename that one. Okay. We can just use the default constructor for particles at the moment. Once again, we definitely don't want to copy them. This is becoming very sensitive for performance. And particles do not have an update and render. Uh, the reasons for this will be discussed in a later tutorial, but this is actually this stuff will be done for each particle by the container for speed purposes. If we're calling a function for every single particle, that's not great. And to start with, we'll give our particles some just some very common things which pretty much every particle needs, which is a position and a size. And we're actually going to define these as um, IW fixed because um, the rendering library will be expecting those too. Okay, so now we have a particle class. So let's review. We have a particle manager, which is the overall manager. Um, it can be updated and rendered in our game loop. This happens once a frame. You can add and remove particle containers to the manager. And in fact, the manager is going to need a, a list of particles, of particle containers. So one other thing we need to do, now that I look at this again, is just to use the list type from STL. We might need a type def later, but this will do for now. It's just initial. That's fine. So the list of particles are addressed by these two functions. And when you look at the actual particle container, the particle container is essentially just an array of particles with a maximum number of particles. And additionally, I've just realized one other thing we'll need is the current number of particles. So there is a current number of particles, which can be zero to the max number of particles. And that's it. And then we also, we actually type the name of this one, it should be particle.h. So we have that array of particles. And when we look at this array, each particle has a position and a size. Now these are not exactly the same thing as what's going to be submitted to the rasterizer, but we'll get into that in the next tutorial and how these, these particle objects are initialized. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, watch out for part two where we start doing a bit more stuff for these particles.